Hello everyone, this is Adan from e Academy, and today in this video we will be looking at advanced techniques to fill our missing data. So this is the fourth episode of imputing missing data and how to deal with missing data. And all of the previous videos, the link of the playlist will be in the above card and the description below. So to get the complete picture, make sure you'll watch the previous videos. So let's get started. So we have been talking about the deletion of missing data as well as imputing missing data with time series and non time series data. Now we have to look at some of the advanced techniques that we use actually to impute missing data. And today we'll be looking at the mice and the canon approach. Obviously there are many other techniques that we use in advanced imputation. If you want us to cover other techniques as well, so make sure to write down in the comment section which particular technique you want us to discuss about. So let's go ahead with the mice technique. So mice is actually a short form of multiple imputation by chain equations. It's a very powerful method used to impute missing values in a data set. The main idea behind mice is to create multiple imputed data sets and then combining them to get a fair result. Somehow it used regression techniques. Because of the nature of the mice, it is well suited if you are dealing with a complex data set. And that's why mice can handle multiple missing values that are appearing at random as well as not appearing random because as mentioned earlier and the back end it is using regression models to estimate the missing values as mice imputes multiple value for each missing data point which help us to prevent the sample size and more importantly statistical power compared to other imputation methods that only impute a single value and that's why it provide more accurate estimates as compared to the rest of the imputation techniques. So we'll say that all in all, MICE is a good choice for data sets with complex missing data patterns. And for cases where you want to maintain the sample size and statistical power of your analysis, but there's a catch. It's also computationally intensive and maybe slow for large data sets. So it's important to consider that trade-off between accuracy and computational resources when deciding whether to use MICE or any other technique. All right. So if you want to see mice in Python, there are two main libraries that you'll see in action. The very first is fancy impute and the second is scikit-learn. Scikit-learn is relatively famous as compared to fancy impute and it's a general purpose library and is very diverse. As compared to fancy impute, it is relatively new to the scikit-learn, but the main idea of the fancy impute library is to focus on just imputation techniques. So in both of these libraries, whenever you want to impute by mice technique, you will see some sort of error because whenever you write from fancy impute import mice, you'll see an import error like this. And in scikit-learn, the mice has been renamed as iterative imputer. So if you import like from sklearn.impute, import iterative imputer, and you will again see the import error. So why are we are getting this error? Because, because in the fancy impute, mice has been renamed at, as iterative imputer. And in sklearn, the iterative imputer is just assigned as some sort of ex experimental module or experimental class. So you can actually use mice in fancy impute in sklearn by these commands. When you look at the fancy impute, you just have to import iterative imputer and you can import as mice, just like we do like numpy as np. In fancy impute, mice has been renamed as iterative imputer. So whenever you want to use mice in fancy impute, you just have to import iterative imputer. And it's completely subjective as to import as mice or as iterative imputer as it is. So you can just initialize the mice imputer like this and then use fit transform to actually impute the missing values. And if you want to use mice in sklearn, you have to first to enable the experimental module. So from sklearn.experimental, import enable iterative imputer. And then the game is simple. You have to write the same command from sklearn.impute, import iterative imputer, and rest is the same. Also, whenever you are initializing the imputer, you can add some parameters according to you. How many iterations you want and what should be the order of imputation. So here I have mentioned some of the parameters like maximum iteration like 210 and imputation order is equal to random. So previously when you have mice, you can also you can also specify some of the parameters here as well. The rest of the proceeding of both of these libraries are exactly the same. 
So if we move towards the other approach that is KNN, short form of K nearest neighbor, and it is one of the most simple imputation technique. And the main idea is just like as we usually do while doing predictive modeling, that to find the nearest neighbor of each missing value and fill the missing value with the average of the values of its k nearest neighbors. And KNN imputation is actually a known parametric approach. And that's why we don't have to worry about any of the assumptions of the data set. And this makes it a good choice for data sets with complex or non-normal distributions or even non-linear data sets. Because this technique can capture this relationship by considering the distances between the data points. So, KNN imputation is most effective when there is a small amount of missing data, as the accuracy of the imputation is directly proportional to the amount of missing data. And again, it is really helpful when you use KNN imputation in high dimensional data set, as it considers the relationship between all the features in the data set. So it's really important to keep this in mind that KNN imputation may not be appropriate for data sets with large amount of missing data or noisy data, as it could lead to over smoothing of the data and loss of information. Again, KNN could also be used in fancy impute and sklearn. So when we go in the fancy impute, you can simply import KNN from the fancy impute and you can initialize just like it by signing the number of nearest neighbors. So here in fancy impute, when you are importing KNN, you have to write the parameters of when initializing with K is equal to 2 and fit the transform. And then eventually perform the imputation with the fit transform. On the other hand, in sklearn, you have to import as KNN imputer. And when you initialize it, you have to assign the nearest neighbor with N neighbors. So this is the smallest difference in using KNN imputer in sklearn and fancy impute. But the backend procedure is absolutely same. So we have covered the two advanced techniques for imputing missing data, MICE and KNN. If you want us to cover more advanced techniques for imputing data, please write down in the comment section below. We'll meet in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.